Hi everyone, uh, my name is Geoffrey Katerega, a member of the OSM community in Uganda and a member of OSM Africa, also working with uh, the humanitarian Open Street Map team uh, based in Kampala uh, in Uganda. As we all know, uh, the global state of the map conference, which is now virtual, was supposed to take place in Africa for the very first time this year. Uh, in this presentation, we are looking at the state of open street map in the different countries in Africa, uh, presenting the results of a survey we did with um, the different countries. Uh, the survey was facilitated by OSM Africa, uh, which is a network of um, all the same communities from all over the continent, and they are working together to grow uh, open street map uh, in our countries. Uh, the goal was to um, get a response from each and every country, even in places where there are currently no existing communities. And they are working with people uh, in those countries to help them start up communities uh, where they don't exist. But before we look at the results of this survey, um, let's start by looking at the state of uh, data itself. Um, this map here shows us uh, the open map not dense in Africa. And you can see from the most bright places, the countries where there is a substantial amount of data. Uh, in this visualization, uh, we see a uh, number of map to buildings per year in Africa from 2007 to 2020 which also helps us to see uh, the history and trend of uh, open map editing in Africa. So um, in 2007, 2008, uh, the pioneers at South Africa, Algeria, Tunisia, uh, from 2008, 2009, Nigeria comes in, Niger, Egypt, and Burkina Faso. Uh, from 2010, uh, to 2011, we have a Guinea-Bissau uh, coming up, uh, with Uganda also rising to the scene there. Um, 2012 to 2013, Cameroon, DRC, Central African Republic, and the rise, with Madagascar also coming to the picture. And as we go into uh, 2014, we have Sierra Leone, South Sudan, Liberia, uh, Guinea. Uh, 2015, a very big rise in Mozambique with Tanzania and Lesotho also rising very fast. 2016, uh, Zimbabwe rising, uh, Tanzania, Eswatini also coming up. 2017, Tanzania escapes from the park. Mali, Malawi, and Zambia also rising. 2018, uh, Uganda comes back into the picture uh, with Tanzania still very far ahead. By 2020, we have a total of 57.7 million buildings uh, with Tanzania taking lead at uh, 11 million uh, buildings. Uh, thanks to the uh, work uh, done by HOT and crowd to map in Tanzania. Uh, the other countries in the top five, are, as we can see, uh, Tanzania, uh, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, and uh, Zambia. Um, the other way to look at it is to compare uh, the population uh, to the total number of map buildings in each country to help us to see which is the most mapped country. Uh, so the statistics here show uh, Eswatini, um, Lesotho, Seychelles, Botswana, and Zimbabwe as the most mapped uh, countries uh, in Africa. Uh, but the number of mapped objects alone may not tell us the whole story. Uh, that's why we talk to the uh, community members in those countries uh, to try to understand what are the stories, what are the factors behind uh, the activities and the uh, status of the awesome communities that we see. So um, yeah, we reached out to 55 countries and got responses from 52 countries. 65% um, of the countries that responded uh, said there is an awesome community in their country, although the level of activity uh, really differs from country to country. We have very active ones. We have some that are inactive or dormant, they are there, but they're not really active. Also, we have countries where there is no existing community at all. Um, 
It's also interesting to note uh, some countries like Egypt and Morocco, um, where there is uh, many active mappers, but no uh, active community. Uh, some of the countries where uh, there are existing communities, um, we uh, yeah looked at some. We look at some of the factors behind the the, the, the activity uh, that that is happening. So one of the things to note is the rise of um, youth mappers, which has also contributed to the rise of the growth of awesome communities in Africa. Uh, though it started only in 2018, uh, there are now uh, 105 uh, youth mappers chapters in different universities across Africa, which is 50% of the total number globally. Um, Nigeria and Tanzania have the highest number of uh, chapters in Africa. And for those that don't know, uh, youth mappers are uh, university-led student clubs uh, that contribute to OpenStreetMap uh, in different countries, so, which is a good way to grow OpenStreetMap because once they uh, you engage people at university, even when they go into uh, the work field, they are likely to use OSM and promote it uh, in their work. Uh, the other factor to consider is what is work in Africa. Uh, so since 2015, uh, HOT has run country programs in eight countries in Africa and also supported uh, OSM communities with device and micro grant in 19 countries in Africa. So in most of the countries where HOT has worked, they have always engaged the local OSM community and helped start up communities where they didn't exist. Um, Open Cities Africa uh, is a project by the World Bank and is engaging open map communities and governments in the use of uh, open street map uh, to build resilient uh, societies. Um, the good thing with this project is that it is connecting uh, OSM communities to government, uh, which is good because now uh, governments in Africa can make use of open map data, which was uh, a challenge um, in very many countries. Uh, definition, how do awesome communities in Africa um, that have communities that are existing, how do they define their membership? Um, so 56% uh, mentioned that everyone who contributes to OSM in their country is a member of the community. 38% uh, mentioned that everyone who participates in events like mapping parties, mapathons, meetups, that's what they count as a member. And... Um, 6% uh, consider people who have paid a membership to be uh, their members. Me, how often do communities, awesome communities in Africa meet? Um, so 46% have not had meetings in a very long time. Uh, also have 24% who have never had a meetup and these are the countries where there is currently no existing awesome community. Um, 2.7 meet twice a month, 17% meet once a month, and 8% meet every week. Um, communication channels, uh, from this graph you will see that most communities um, communicate through uh, WhatsApp and Facebook, um, and only 34% have a website for their community. Uh, the other communication channels is Telegram um, and also the talk uh, mailing list um, that they use for their communication. Uh, leadership structures. Um, so 54% uh, of the communities we talk to say they don't have um, a leadership structure in place whereas 45% uh, have a leadership structure in place. So um, it's also interesting to note that there's no uniform leadership structure that is similar in every country. So every country comes up with their own uh, structure that works for them. Um, so one of the challenges that new communities face is to decide on which kind of uh, leadership structure to put in place, especially one that caters for uh, different groups in the same country that are all promoting OSM, 
Um, so it can really be um, a make or breaker uh, if it is not done properly. Um, so for the countries that have leadership structure, they have, for example, a national coordinator with a secretary, treasurer, and chairperson. Others have an NGO structure with a board and a secretariat or uh, an NGO board with a um, structure with the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and the project managers. Um, others have country associations. Others have an OSM lead and an activity communication person. Others have just a country coordinator, a project manager, and a trainer, uh, a training coordinator, and a personnel coordinator. Others are just led by a core group of five individuals um, without any um, roles. Um, then we have several that are just youth mappers chapters, which have like their own uh, leadership structure. Um, community successes. Uh, so each community defines success in different ways, uh, but these are some of the common ones that um, we see like common. Um, organizing community-led projects, um, manage, ma mapping map public transport in cities, um, creating youth mappers chapters, was also pointed out as a success, contributing to open data through mapping, uh, participating in open cities project, mapping health facilities, starting up an OSM community, uh, completely mapping the country and using data for spatial planning, um, organizing set of the map conferences, um, government and NGOs and businesses increase the use in OSM data was also a success for some countries um, and also humanitarian mapping to, uh, to do mapping for cholera, cyclones, Ebola, uh, flooding, Lassa fever, um, running micro grant projects, um, re, uh, training women in mapping, and then registering as a non profit uh, was also mentioned as uh, a success by some communities because it opens up more opportunities for them when they're organized, uh, registered. They can also become a local chapter that is affiliated to OSNF. Um, when it comes to challenges, there are several challenges that we have mentioned, uh, from lack of tools um, like laptops and phones to use for mapping, uh, lack of access to internet. Um, there was also um, a, a challenge of lack of commitment from some members who uh, don't want to volunteer for free. Um, so this this is maybe surprising, but in Africa. Some people get used to volunteering uh, after being paid. So even when you ask them to participate in mapping uh, as, as volunteers, some want to be paid, which is not possible. Um, lack of funding for activities, uh, lack of awareness and buy-in from decision makers like government, uh, little knowledge of OSM, um, lack of space for meetups and trainings, um, lack of leadership within the community, losing community members along the way. Um, then also have an issue of youth mappers, uh, chapters or clubs uh, not being well represented in the local community, especially uh, in countries where there was um, already an existing OSM community. When the new youth mappers chapters are created, sometimes they're not um, brought in or represented in the local community, which is a challenge. Um, multiple languages. So I find like one country having Arabic, French, English. So multiple languages is also a problem. Lack of postal addresses and zip codes, which makes mapping in cities um, to map useful data hard. And also political challenges like war occupation um, by other countries is also a challenge because without peace, even mapping is not possible. Um, governments that don't want to open up data, uh, which is also due to lack of awareness about OpenStreetMap and what it is, uh, difficulty in accessing funding without formal registration, 
and then gender imbalance, where we are having very few women involved in open street map, um, multiple groups with multiple agendas, um, with different agendas. It's very hard to put them under one umbrella as an OSM community. There's, there are also concerns around data privacy when try to um, uh, convince people to use OSM. Um, other challenge mentioned is low resolution and clear imagery. So uh, there's no tagging for some things uh, that are unique to Africa. Um, low OSM, uh, low open source culture, and then concerns around uh, data quality. So we also asked the members to um, to tell us what are the challenges that they have um, used to overcome, what are the solutions they have used to overcome some of the challenges they are facing. So collaboration with different actors, uh, GIS professionals, business, government. Um, so don't just work alone just because you're awesome. Community, try to reach out to different uh, actors. Um, Create, uh, creating OSM open data and open source awareness through trainings and online campaigns, uh, establishing local OSM communities where they don't exist, um, establishing more youth mappers chapters, formal registration as an organization which will open up opportunities, uh, forming partnerships with organizations and companies, uh, writing project proposals and applying for grants to get funding, uh, for example, through the OSMF and Hot Micro Grants, um, development of uh, value-added applications on OpenStreetMap that meet everyday challenges, um, and organizing instead of the map conferences. These are solutions to the uh, problems. Um, organizing regular meetups, uh, mapathons, um, mapping parties to keep the community engaged and active. Uh, establishing digital ch ch champions in villages who map their villages uh, and also uh, having WhatsApp groups segmented per city, uh, per district, per university, um, which helps to keep members engaged. Um, mobilizing funds from community members to contribute for internet, for meeting space. Um, yeah, it's also interesting to uh, because one of the reasons that communities express for the for their activities was lack of funding. Uh, so we we looked at which communities um, applied for the OSM F micro grants this year, and uh, it's interesting to uh, to note that not everyone applied, although they had like need for the funding. So we tried to ask what are the reasons they didn't apply. So uh, some of them didn't know uh, about the micro grants program at all, which comes back to the what channels does uh, the OSM Foundation use when communicating to communities um, in relation to what channels do the communities themselves use. Uh, some mentioned that time wasn't enough to put together a proposal. Uh, some simply didn't have a need to apply for the micro grant. Uh, and some had no capacity, so no team to work on a proposal. Um, we also tried to look at OSMF membership. So uh, thirty-one percent of the respondents to the survey said they were already uh, paid up OSMF members. Uh, but for those that are not already members, we also tried to find out the reasons why they uh, they have failed to become a member, official paid members. And some of the uh, reasons given was uh, the payment platform. So uh, there's no PayPal in, in, in several countries in Africa and it's the main uh, platform used for paying membership fees. Um, some countries, some people mentioned that they were not even aware of OSMF membership. Um, also this includes people who are the countries which are new to OSM, where there is currently no existing community. Um, some people feel that they're just volunteers, so they don't need to become official members. Um, others felt OSM is open source free, so they don't need to pay any membership fee. 
uh, others expressed a lack of funds. Um, but it's also in interesting to note that uh, there is an option to apply for membership with a fee waiver. So meaning you can become a member for free and, you know, uh, yeah, it would be important and good if the people who don't have access to funds can uh, can take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, participation in the Open SMAP uh, Foundation is working groups. Um, 36% didn't know about the working groups at all. Um, yeah, 41% uh, yeah, want to participate. Uh, they're participating in some way and 23% are aware, uh, but are not participating due to some reason. And one of the reasons they gave was um, lack of awareness. Some didn't know about the existence of working groups. Um, some simply didn't have time, uh, lack of access to internet, language barrier, is some of the reasons that were given. Um, yeah, the other thing, of course, which is a, a challenge is that we don't have any local official, uh, local chapter in Africa at the moment. And we asked members to suggest ways um, how we can get more uh, OSM local chapter, OSMF local chapters established in Africa. So one of the reasons, um, one of the uh, suggestions that was given was to start with setting up local structures in countries because uh, that is key before you become a local chapter. Um, others suggested that we need to make the application process less complex. Uh, we need to create uh, incentives and benefits uh, for OSM communities to uh, become local chapters. Um, they need to create more awareness. Uh, we need to provide mentorship and leadership training. We need to invite the OSMF board and work group leads to speak to uh, OSM Africa members. Um, yeah, and we need to start with individual membership before even we try to become a local chapter. Um, and also, provide communities with financial support. So this can be done through uh, the micro grant program. So if they get a micro grant, they can use some of that uh, to register themselves as an organization. And later on, they can apply to become official uh, chapters. So I also wanted to know, um, yeah, what's the vision of uh, awesome communities in Africa? Where do they want OSM to be in 10 years? So. Uh, when we ask this question, these are some of the answers we got. So they want uh, to see the entire world um, using OSM. Uh, they want to see more members uh, in their communities and more job creation through OSM. Um, they want OSM to be the main source of spatial and uh, data for both national governments, organization, and for development uh, to spare ahead solutions and policies. Um, there will be more mappers and more users. There will be more strong communities all over the world. Um, OSM will be the number one best map in the world. The entire country will be um, fully mapped. There will be youth mappers chapters in every university. Um, OSM will be the number one reference for mapping across the continent. There will be more integration in uh, games. Um, OSM uh, integration in 3D uh in, th in mapping in point clouds in virtual reality and data um and even more osm projects in africa so the purpose of this uh survey was to see where we are as osm africa where we need to be and now we can focus on how to get there so as to achieve our goal to map each and every corner in africa uh, i'll leave you with this video which shows um an animation of OSM editing in Africa uh, since 2009. Uh, thank you.